All right, well, the time has finally come. The goal for this video is to start up the Fummins build for the first time. So we've got our engine in, we've got all that stuff sorted, we've got most of the wiring done, we've got most of the fuel system done. I mean, it's about there. It's about there. We got a couple things to finish up on the wiring department. We got to finish up our fuel system. We got our last fitting in today. So we got to drop the tank down and hook up our return line and finalize all our lines so we have a fuel system, fill it with fluids and uh, try to light her off. So again, we have a handful of things like putting this battery box in, putting the batteries in, getting the battery cables routed and hooked up and things like that. But we're, we're very close. We don't have much work to do before we can at least attempt to start this thing. So. Let's get into it. I think first thing I want to do is the fuel system, um, just because I, I hate that being unfinished and working on something else. I like to get projects done before I move on if I can. So I want to finish that up. So we got to drop the tank out and uh, add our fitting and get our lines finished up. It's crazy how much lower this thing sits with the cab on it. a bit of a struggle but we got our fittings in so we've got our return from the engine with our Dietrichs adapter fitting and then the blue is our return from the pump so those are done wiring hooked up and back in place so we can push the tank up oh we gotta hook the vents up so I gotta hook the vents up push the tank up bolt it all back together all right so all the lines are done got our feed line there goes down to our sump so the sump was leaking originally and uh, I think it's because the tank has this texture on it and it has it where the sump was so I ground it down flat put it back on it seems to be okay I put like a gallon in it I want to put another gallon or so in and see if it leaks because if it does leak we're gonna have to go get another tank and draw from the top so I want to figure that out now but at least we should be able to start it as is and then yeah I got my return lines done those are up there. So what I need to do now is put a little more gas in the tank, fill the filters up, and then we can move on to wiring. So the guys over at Holly sent me this really cool setup. So it's a transfer pump that goes into a typical race jug and then a Mr. Gasket race jug. And it is kind of ironic though. So I got this, oh, and it's, it's got an automatic shut off too when it's full. So when it backs up, you can see that wire in there it'll automatically shut off. So we're not gonna fill this up, but it is handy. But anyway, it's funny because this came in, I didn't know what they had sent me. They said they're gonna send me something to make my life easier, right? And it was sitting on my front porch while I used an old fuel pump to drain all the gas, uh, all the diesel out of this tank. So I had it sitting there the whole time, it would have been significantly easier. But you can see, so just gonna throw another gallon or so in there and then fill the filters and then back to wiring. All right, so now we gotta put stuff back together. Just general stuff. Oh no, no. I don't understand how you can drain something so many times and still be full. This mounts to the radiator support so we can't oh can't put this in yet and then obviously this battery cable would go across the radiator support but can't do that either um i need to run the power cable down here it's already half routed i need to get that hooked up to the starter and i don't know i think there's a couple other little things we gotta hook this um basically take a 12 volt source out of here send it to this relay it's already unterminated easy peasy and then i think we're about Ready? I don't know. I'm gonna have to kind of go through a mental checklist to make sure, but pretty sure we're close. All right, one thing I am gonna do is pull this air horn off. That way I can weld up this side because we need to be prepared for the possibility of this thing trying to run away on us. And uh, if we have a giant secondary hole, it's gonna be pretty hard to close off the air. Basically running away is when 
Sometimes diesels can, like if the oil's leaking through the turbo, basically oil can fuel it, or you know, if you have stuck open injector, like multiple of them, and it'll just rev and rev and rev, um, and basically the only way to stop it is to block the air going into it. So anyway, I'm gonna weld this up real quick. And our bolts should be here. I don't know, I have to go look. So we got some 120 mils, they look like they're gonna fit perfect. Man, I gotta say also, this is not at all sponsored, but McMaster car is life. So I ordered all this stuff, showed up the next day. Like it's ridiculous how fast they ship and it's so much cheaper. I can buy like this entire bag of bolts and it cost me the same as what like four of those bolts would cost at Ace, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, but I got some cool stuff, I got these, zip tie thing so like you screw them on so you can self tapper them in or whatever and then basically they they loop back to themselves so like for running wiring screw it in and like so anyway they have all like all sorts of stuff on there but i've been stocking up on hardware because it's it's you know that's like the one thing that always hangs me up if i don't have the right hardware for something i go to put something together and i gotta go to the store and get bolts and it's an hour um so i just everything that i notice i need i just put it on the list order it uh, but anyway, yeah, let's weld this up. Perfect. All right, so I've been using this TIG button, so it's like, it's a variable voltage button. It's like using the pedal, but it's a button. And, uh, yeah, well, it's probably come out a little better with the button, but or with the, with the pedal. But I've been trying to get the hang of this. Use the short rod to tack. All right, cool. That's done. I gotta weld something for Ben real quick, so we'll do that. Time to install this thing for the hopefully final time. Uh, also, some people said, oh, it looks like you could use it without the two spacers. You can't, it hits this injector connector. Again, it wouldn't look, like, it looks goofy because it's two spacers, but normally that would be a grid heater and then you'd have a spacer on top to make it clear. But it looks extra goofy since it's a spacer and a spacer. But yeah, I tried it every which way. It's the only way it fits. These screws aren't too long. They didn't have a 110 mil option. Like you would think that would work like this one doesn't even start threading and the threads are before this threads in so like I don't get it should definitely work all right I did manage to get it bolted on the hundred mils actually worked out basically it was sitting up about an eighth to a quarter of an inch so once it compressed down and compressed the gaskets a little bit it's got plenty of thread engagement or enough really like a 105 mil bolt would be ideal but i don't think i'm gonna have an easy time finding that uh, also this is our ford map sensor so what's cool about this is they set up the harness to run the stock ford map sensor as well as the cummins one and uh this means our factory boost gauge will work so this this generation truck has a boost gauge on the dash which is really cool so i'm excited about that little things like that just are neat. All right, I'm gonna go underneath, hook up the starter power wire, run to the store, get oil, fill it with oil, new filter, and uh, yeah, then it's pretty much time to start it. Batteries, throw the batteries in and, tr and try to start it. So we're getting real close. I'm a little nervous, you know, cause it, it, there's a lot of question marks. You know, the injectors might not be good. It might not start. And that might be because the injectors were not great to begin with and they got stuff in them while they were sitting out of the engine. And th there's just a lot of things that could go wrong. And if it doesn't start, it is gonna be very difficult to diagnose cause it could be a lot of different things. So anyway, enough talking about it. Let's get back to work. All right, one of the last things we gotta do is oil and filter so since these filters are upside down it's really easy to pre-fill them it's definitely ideal to pre-fill oh geez getting a little wild to pre-fill your oil filter because if you ever there's some you know some vehicles you can't because they go on there sideways but cars where you can't if you watch it'll take it'll take a solid three seconds before you get oil pressure because it's got to fill that whole filter up especially a big filter like this this thing takes probably a quart by itself maybe more So 
sweet. We just gotta fill the engine up. It's always funny to me how much oil diesels take. Now we can remove our no oil sticker that was there to remind us that we haven't put oil on it. Oh, it's leaving residue. We'll do that to me, Summit. All right, one of the last things we got to do is wire up our lift pump. So basically this is for a Dodge. I got the harness for a Dodge. It's plug and play for a Dodge, not for a Ford. Waiting on the Ford one, I don't know when it's going to get here. So I'm going to use the Dodge one and just wire it to an external battery to run our pump. Obviously before we even run our pump and prime our fuel system, I want to check all the other electronics, get the batteries in and things like that. So plug away and I'll update you guys for the first, first turn of the key and see what sets on fire. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Big moment guys, we're hooking up the batteries. This doesn't, I don't know, this doesn't seem right. This is definitely like the way it's supposed to go, but I don't know, it's kind of weird. Just these, like the crossover wire, whatever this wire is that goes down into the harness. This one works right with the cover, but the rest of them don't. I don't know, we'll know better once we get the front end of the truck on. battery terminal is on its last limb but should get us through for now. Here relays clicking, swap helpers on. We got power inside the truck. It's a good sign. All right, well, oh we got headlights on. Why are my headlights on? Oh, okay. All that stuff works. Everything in here seems to be working. stuck on that's off okay I need to check something I need to go hook up the trans shift cable to put reverse neutral let's turn this guy off oh I can't okay I'll be right back all right so we're just gonna try to crank it over not actually start it I've got the trans cable hooked back up nope not getting anything on that we start it with the door open. Oh, gotta figure that out. All right, well, uh, several hours later and we still have not got it to start. Uh, long, dramatic. Uh, so, so basically there's this wire. So it comes from the harness. It's got this little connector right here and then that's your main power cable to the starter, that wire to the starter. So I unplugged this, sent power to it, got started to like click, and then that was it. So apparently doing that, I think only if it's still hooked up to the system, can cause the ECU to freak out and lock up because basically it thinks you're trying to steal it. Uh, going through that, yada yada. Trying to figure out why this thing is not starting, not even turning the starter over. And I find this alarm system. I mean, this thing was tied into everything. There's one, two, three, four, five, like six different boxes <laughs> tied into literally everything. I mean, you can see how much stuff I had to take apart of the truck. I had to take all this apart. It was all the way through here, a steering column cover, all this. Um, so what I'm hoping it is, is these two wires were separate like this and they went, they, they, they interrupt the wire. So this wire would be connected normally, but instead it was going, you know, one to the box and then presumably out of the box. So I'm hoping that is my starter signal wire, but I, I tried to connect those earlier and it didn't work, but I, I finished removing the alarm system from everywhere else. So we're gonna try that, hook power back up, and uh, I'm sure it probably wasn't the problem, um, but it needed to get removed anyway. So, you know, one of those things. And, and I didn't wanna sit here and try all this other stuff chasing my tail when maybe it was that the whole time, you know? So yeah, I'm gonna try it, let you know if uh, I'm successful. If not, I'm gonna be diving into some other stuff. <laughs> it's just part of it, but it's definitely been a long day. All right, still the same thing from the inside, but some more diagnostics. 
I went on the mission to pull the starter out. It is it is pretty difficult, honestly. It's like right by the frame rail, and one of the bolts is really hard to get to. But we got it out, pulled it out, test tested it on the floor, worked fine. So put it back in the truck, hooked just the positive cable up to the battery. So nothing else hooked up. Nothing. The truck is not on, and then jumper cable ground straight to the engine block spun over spun the engine over weekly because it's one battery but it spun it over so uh yeah i don't know man it's it's weird it, it seems like when i try to do that because basically this is the trigger wire down to the starter um when i try to do that with everything hooked up it goes and then that's it and then now and then all of a sudden i'm getting 12 volts out of here which makes no sense um because this this shouldn't be feeding back voltage so I, you know, I don't know, but we're gonna call it a night for tonight. We'll pick it back up in the morning. Hopefully we figure something out. Wish me luck. <laughs> so one thing I have learned when it comes to projects is th there comes a time when you need to walk away, take a step back, clear your mind and come back to it. Especially when you're dealing with a problem like we are right now that you can't figure out, uh, you your judgment gets a little clouded and you know, you get frustrated and you're trying these things over and over. And a lot of times walking away, coming back to it with a fresh, clear mind is usually when you'll solve the problem. So. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna go have some fun. We are taking my go kart out. So, some of you may know about this kart, some of you may not. Basically, it's a 206 kart. It's a really affordable, really competitive racing class. They're sealed four stroke engines. Uh, the carts are really affordable to run, and they're, they're a lot of fun. There is so much fun. So, there was supposed to be a race this weekend, and I have missed like almost every race this year because they always fall on the same weekend as a major out of state drift event. It's so frustrating. Uh, so I was finally gonna make this one, but it, of course it got canceled because of the virus. So the funny thing is, my friend Tim, who I raced league night with at Bushnell, he uh, has the same problem. He ends up missing most of the races because he's working on the weekends and I'm at events on the weekends. And this was one he was gonna be able to make it to as well. So we both decided, you know what, screw it. Nobody else is gonna go out. Let's go out and have some fun, do some practice, rip around our carts and, and get some laps in. So we're still maintaining social distancing. There should only be, I would say a max of five people, including the employees, and we'll all be more than six feet apart. So we're being safe, washing our hands, all that good stuff. But anyway, we're on the way there. We shouldn't be too long. And we're gonna go have some fun, race our cart around. See you guys there. Well, we made it. I think I saw one person on the track, so. So everyone wonders why I didn't get a shifter cart and why I got this cart instead. These only make like nine horsepower. Uh, the reason is because these are really cost effective to run. You run a harder compound tire that lasts like a whole season. Two, um, they're very cheap to maintain. Engines don't require any work. You can go a season or two on an engine. Three, uh, the class is very competitive because of that, because they're so affordable. You know, everything's pretty even. It's a sealed engine. You're not dealing with engines that have been rebuilt and modified and people that know what they're doing, making all kinds of crazy power. So it's a cool class. It's a lot of fun. And you can buy one of these carts like this. This is a Margate Knight K3. You can buy one of these carts brand new for like less than you could get a Miata and put coilovers on it. Oh man, I haven't ridden this thing in a while. It's a whole other animal from the rental carts. Gotta get some heat in the tires. The brakes are a lot more sensitive. I should have checked my tire pressure. Yeah, I think that tire is like flat. Or very low. So we're going to fit in this next lap. Ah, same! <laughs> Probably gonna need some of this. Same. <laughs> Literally exact same thing. <laughs> I, I, I went out like, oh great, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I took the first turn and I heard the tire like, and I was like, oh. <laughs> That's funny. All right. One tire was actually flat, as I suspected, so should be a little better now. Forget how freaking much more grip there is than the lead carts. One thing I really need to practice too is uh, like threshold braking. The brakes are a lot better than the rental car brakes, but they're a lot more of an on off switch. I don't remember what my 
fastest time around the full track is. Oh, that was terrible. Oh, it's hard to put together a good lap in this thing. It's so much different than Reynolds. Woo! Already getting tired. So the cool thing about this lap timer, you can't really see them from this angle, but there's LED lights on the top. There's five of them. So basically what those tell you is how much faster or slower you are than your best lap. Basically green is faster, red is slower. The more green, the faster, the more red, the slower. So I think it's a tenth a second each. So if you're if you've got five green, that means you're five tenths faster than your current your current best lap. If you got five red, that means you're five tenths slower than your current best lap. Now this is really cool because it allows you to try different stuff in different corners and be able to see pretty much immediately whether that was quicker or slower. So really handy. It, it's like playing a video game. Like you, it makes it, makes it so much easier to pick up the pace and dial in your laps and learn what works and what doesn't. I think my fastest lap around this track in a rental is 66, which was like really fast. The carts were going really fast that night. I qualified first for lead night with that time. But normally we're in like the 68s. Uh, it's like fast in a, in a, a rental car. Ah, again. You can see the red means we're down time. We're going slower. My chest protector is like sliding up into my armpits too. Ah, every time. We're going to blow it again. there to go a little slower into that one and then pick up the speed on the way out. I need to carry more speed through that one. We're on pace at least. We're slapping a while, we're not down. Definitely go like flat through there. up some time. 101.5. Pretty consistent 101s. There's just so much more to it than your line through the corner. Because it's like, how can you go through the corner where you can dig out hard? Oh, okay, I gotta take a break. 10 laps will wear you out quick, man. Whew. All right, we're gonna go back out. So I guess a, a really competitive lap in this climate would be like a high 59. So we're not too far off of like fast. About a second off. Second and a half-ish. Exactly the same as our other fast lap. Up a little bit. Drop the tire there. quick. I'm always breaking late for that one. Turn it in late. One oh one two nine. Fastest yet. Alright, we're up a decent bit. We can't blow it. Gotta not blow it. Lost a little there. Oh, we got into the 60s. 60.9. 
Uh, definitely the fastest lap I've done. I uh, felt like I was starting to get it figured out. But I was getting tired. And I was like, I pretty much, it's like do or die this lap. If I want to improve my time, because I'm going to get too tired after this one. See if like I'm faster, smoother, or if I need to drive with a lot of aggression. I mean that was a 101.5. Need to focus on getting on throttle earlier too. Lap yet. Ah, blew it. We're catching up. again. We were on pace all the way through there until the last turn. Felt reasonably quick. one. All right, we're going in. Last session over. My hands are are a little sore. Like I said, it's like one of those things, like once I ride in this thing far more frequently, I'll stop death gripping the wheel, but when you're not in your comfort zone, your natural instinct is to death grip the wheel. It is crazy how quick these things turn, just like It's so funny when you get in a normal vehicle after go-karts, even rental carts, 
it just feels so sloppy. You're like, whoa, you go to turn, you think you only need to turn like, you know, a quarter turn of the wheel, and you're like, why isn't it turning? <laughs> it's like the first two turns you make just feel so weird. Uh, anyway, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Definitely pretty sure I improved my time. I'd have to go back and look to what my fastest time was the last time I went. I can't remember if it was a 61 something or a six, I don't think it was a 60 something. I really don't think it was that, but I, I don't know. It was cooler then too. The weather definitely affects things a lot, but definitely picked up the pace. It seems like I'm about a second, uh, around a second off like really fast. So that's that's good, that's awesome. I was I think I was like two seconds off before. So definitely getting more comfortable in the car, getting more used to it. Hopefully we can make a race, but I checked when the next race date is. Same weekend as the next round of Clutch Kickers, every freaking time, man. Uh, but it, it, you know, hopefully, hopefully there will be one that doesn't match up to the same weekend as another event I'm doing, because that, that's annoying. I want to race, it's so fun, uh, it's so fun. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoy Bushnell. If you're in the Central Florida area, it's definitely worth uh, going there to do rental carts. Their carts are the nicest out of any of the rental car places I've been to. The facility's really nice and they're great people. I mean, it, it's like it's like a little family there. You know, we just happened upon going to league night. Me and Ben, we went to just do rental carts and it was league night and we started going, you know, every single uh, league night. And, you know, it's just like everyone knows everyone. Everyone's super cool and it's great. Uh, Brett, who owns it, awesome guy. Ryan, awesome. They're all great people so definitely my favorite place to go karting and that's like pretty much the only place I go these days but yeah I guess that's gonna be it for this video might try to tinker with the truck today if I do get it started then this won't be the end um, but mo I, I think we're gonna have to do some more drastic measures than just basic troubleshooting so I'll see you guys for the next one hopefully we'll be starting it but uh, for now thanks for watching thanks for subscribing see you see you for the next one I already said that okay goodbye <laughs>